Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. This is exciting. This is section 5.4 of Introduction to Electrodynamics by uh, Griffiths. Uh, this is second edition. This is exciting. We get to finally introduce to you something you've probably never heard of before this course. This is the magnetic vector potential. So remember, we decided a long time ago, or we discovered, that the curl of the E vector is always equal to zero. Okay. And we had this set of theorems back in chapter one. Uh, theorem one said that when you have a vector field whose curl is zero, then that implies, one of the things it implies is that it's actually the gradient of some other uh, scalar uh, field. And in, in the case of E, we discovered that that's the potential, which has a great amount of things to do with the work it takes to move a charge to a particular point. Well, now we have this rule that the divergence of the B vector is equal to zero. And using the second theorem, one of the conclusions is that B vector must, of necessity, be the, the curl of some other vector. We're going to call it A, the vector potential, the magnetic vector potential. Okay? So basically, the curl of B, which is the curl of the curl, of A, that is equal to um, U naught J, and using the curl of a curl, you get that's the gradient of the divergence of the A vector minus the Laplacian of the A vector. And this isn't the um, scalar Laplacian, this is the vector Laplacian, so it's the Laplacian of the x component plus the Laplacian of the y component plus the Laplacian of the j component of the k component in those directions respectively. Okay, and um, keep in mind if you're doing spherical coordinates, things get a little weird, so you know you can't simply just do what I'm going to do here. Now, we get to choose just like for the potential, we get to choose our zeros. Well, for the a vector, we're going to choose that the divergence is always equal to zero by choice. Okay, and the reason why we get to choose that to be zero is let's suppose that um, somebody says we want to use a prime vector where the divergence of a prime vector is not equal to zero. Okay, um, well, what we can do is we can say, well, instead of that a prime vector that you had, it was nice, we're going to use this a vector that's equal to a prime vector plus the gradient of some scalar field okay and if we can find a scalar field such that the Laplacian of that scalar field is equal to minus the divergence of that a prime field that you proposed um, and we look at this and we go oh look this is the, the, the uh, Poisson's equation just like we had in you know, um, electrostatics with the potential. This is equal to minus rho over epsilon naught. And we know how to solve the Laplacian equation, or the Poisson's equation, okay? As long as the charge goes to zero at infinity, then we can have a solution that says V is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught, um, the integral of charge density over R d tau, okay? And by the same token, if we want the divergence of this a prime vector to go to field, then we can choose our lambda to be 1 over 4 pi, the integral of the divergence of a vector prime over r d tau. Okay, so using the same logic that gave us that solution, we can use that solution. Okay, if, if this a prime vector that the person proposed or you proposed does not go to zero infinity, you need to be a little smart about how to discover the right L. But the end result is that the do, 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 the divergence of this new field is going to be the divergence of that uh, plus the divergence of that and so you can choose any lambda to add to this a vector to eventually arrive at one that is divergenceless. So we're going to choose always that the a vector is divergenceless because it makes our life easy and um, making our lives easy is what physics is all about. Um, so Ampere's law becomes this. OK, 
Okay, this becomes zero by choice. And so we have the, oh, I need a negative sign there. The Laplacian of the vector magnetic vector potential is equal to the current. Um, this is nothing different than Poisson's equation that we studied so intently uh, with the potential, except for there's three of them. There says the x component of this is a Poisson equation for the x component of the current, and the y component is the same for there, and the z component is the same for over there. And um, assuming that the current goes to zero at infinity, then we can simply write down the answer. A vector is equal to mu naught over four pi, the integral of the J vector over R d tau. Okay, and if you wanted to do this for surface currents, the A. Oh, k, 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 and for line currents. k vector uh, i dl over r, but you know the i is probably constant, so you can just pull that out and just use dl for the length there. So that is how we can calculate the a vector. Um, now one of the, the sad things is that a is not quite as useful as our potential was. There's no um, So there's no uh, really good physical interpretation of what this a vector really means. Um, it would, you know, if we had a scalar that can produce a vector, then we would be going from from a function of uh, that produces one value to something that has three values. But here we have a vector going to a vector. We really don't save much computationally by going to a. Um, so it's not that it's. It's magical, it has these interesting properties, it makes some problems easier to solve, but it's not quite the panacea that the potential was for electrostatics. Anyway, that's a brief introduction. We're going to cover a couple examples next, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Be sure to share it with your friends. Thanks and bye.